All right, so what I'm going to do in Link Roundup from now on is instead of reviewing every single article or piece of paper, uh, I'm just going to maybe review four or five of them. So uh, there's the first one today is called Shaping the Homosexual Image, the Effects of the Eulenburg Affair on the Early German Homosexual Rights Movement. And as, as always, uh, you can click below uh, to the thread and see all the sources and, and other information. Uh, that's written. So, Shaping the Homosexual Image, the Effects of the Eulenburg Affair uh, on the Early German Homosexual Rights Movement. Uh, video 27 gives us uh, a little insight into Adolf Brand and his trial. Basically what happened was members of the German, uh, German government were accused of having same-sex relationships. Uh, there, were, there were libel trials and this was the Eulenburg Affair that, that I referenced in video 27. Uh, the basic gist of this work is that this created the this created the idea in the public mind that same-sex relationships are feminizing, because Magnus Hirschfeld took the stand and basically implied that that homosexuality or same-sex relationships are are effeminate. So, if you want to read through this, it's very interesting. It's not too long. It's pretty well written by a, a PhD candidate at Boston College. Uh, the second one uh, is also uh, an academic paper. It's titled uh, Third Sex or Self Owners, the Political Use of Biological versus Cultural Models of Homosexuality. And this contrasts just like I did in video 27. Uh, just so you know, I'm not making this stuff up. Other people are making it up too. Uh, it contrasts the difference between Magnus Hirschfeld and Adolf Brand. So this essay he writes, this essay explores the role of the, uh, the, uh, the role that ideological models of homosexuality play in social movements. Uh, etiolog etiological models are basically, you know, origins of how did same-sex um, uh, affairs or relationships or inclinations arise. So he says, homosexual social movements have tended to cleave along a dividing line into those who seek legal change through lobbying and those who believe in a much more radical stance. As we will see, the first group inclined to the biological essentialist model, the second to the cultural social uh, constructivist model. So Magnus Hirschfeld said 2.2 percent of the population was homosexual. Uh, they were born that way and they were, uh, they were also effeminate. This is incidentally also what science says today. However, you had the social constructivist cultural model uh, as embodied by Adolf Brand and his followers who said that, uh, wait a second, look at ancient Greece, look at other cultures, most men were having sex with other men. This is actually a masculine sort of thing to do. Uh, the author writes, the group around Brand believed that Hirschfeld's biological conception denied the homosexual impulse felt by every individual and present to varying degrees in every interaction between people of the same sex. So basically, you have the born gay 2% model or the everyone's bisexual model. And, and he writes a little bit on this. He writes uh, on this. What I don't like a lot about a lot of these academic essays is, is you have two radically uh, or, or seemingly ex mutually exclusive points of view. 2% gay or everyone's a bisexual. Um, and everyone's uh, so-called homosexual to some degree. And he doesn't really take a point one way. He's like, well, this guy said this, and that guy said that. You know, there, there really isn't much of a reconciliation between the two points, namely that, yes, gays are, to some degree, effeminate, but most men are bisexual, which is, I think, the grero reconciliation that I've tried to outline in Chapter 10 of my book. But nonetheless, he does conclude that uh, in the contemporary era, with the rise of the Christian right, and conservative politics in general, as well as the putative scientific possibility of the search for the gay gene, the biological model is once again seen by the majority of, although not all, homosexual social movements as holding out uh, more hope in terms of achieving goals. Well, I would actually disagree with that completely. First of all, it's bad strategy. Uh, if it is true, and it is true, that most men have a bisexual potential, then even those who have exclusive same-sex attractions, uh, the gays, it would still be a good strategy to point out that most people have same-sex attractions. And, and the reason that gay men don't point this out for, well, they don't, uh, for two reasons. They, they, first of all, they feel 
they feel different from straight men and they assume that uh, their gender differences or uh, whatever temperamental differences they might have uh, are also uh, the result of, of their sexuality. So they feel sort of feminine and they are sexually different. So they assume that straight men must be the complete opposite. They must be just normal kind of masculine and at the same time only attracted to, to, uh, to women. And that's actually false because most men, if we look at other cultures, are, are capable of being attracted to other men. Uh, the other reason is even a lot of uh, gay men who are attracted uh, or, or who realize that most men are attracted to other men, or at least that that's a, that's a feasible possibility, uh, you don't want to tell straight men that they're, not attra that, they're, that they're attracted to other men. That's just seen as politically incorrect these days, you see. So anyways, uh, that's, that's that. Uh, third article, The Invisible Bisexual Man. Uh, from Salon.com. I just want to read three pretty nifty quotes. And this is quoting somebody, quoting a self-professed bisexual. Whenever, say, someone prominent heterosexually married male public figure has a same-sex affair, literally everyone rolls their eyes at the closeted homosexual, he says. I'm not sure I remember ever hearing someone seriously entertain the possibility Lander was bisexual. Bisexuals are more than ever, but our cult cultural default, the shortcut we take, to understand a person is still gay or straight. Uh, well, I can disagree with that. Uh, there's no nuance uh, in that. Even without any genuine questions about their identity, many bisexual men end up choosing a different label depending on the circumstances. Quote, I am either gay or heterosexual dependent upon the company I keep, says 49-year-old Ed. Some men identify as gay when they're dating a man, and straight when they're dating a woman. It's easier to go along with people's assumptions than it is to detail the subtle nuances of one's attractions. Indeed. And the last quote that caught my eye, but several men in their 20s said that straight women were turned off by it, their bisexuality, their attraction to men. I encounter lots of women who totally rule out relationship with men who've slept with men, says Simon. It seems like straight men attach an ick factor to bisexual men that straight men don't attach to bisexual women. As I think I've said in another video, I, I completely agree with this. Um, so on an on a online site uh, like OkCupid, you can pick from whether you're attracted to women or you're attracted to women and men or men only. So when I, when I put I'm attracted only to women, I get tons of, of responses from women. When I put I'm attracted to women and men, you would expect that I would get the same amount of responses from women plus, well, same amount from women plus the amount from men that would be on the side who are bisexual or gay or whatever. What happens is the amount of women who respond actually goes down. So there is certainly, I can confirm this on my own personal, um, what do you call it, uh, personal experiment that, uh, yeah, a lot of women are simply not... Uh, Whatever they might say, they, they don't like uh, men who are attracted to other men. You know, and then they get upset that all these men then say, say they're down low and all this stuff. Yeah, you're the reason we're lying, darlings, you know. And uh, the last article, although we have a video review as well, uh, Russian anti-gay bill passes protesters detain, detained. A bill that stigmatizes Russia's gay community and bans the distribution of information about homosexuality to children was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly approved by the lower house of parliament Tuesday. The bill banning propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations still needs to be passed by the appointed upper house and signed into law by President Vladimir Putin, but neither step is in doubt. So if we turn to chapter 11 of my book, uh, which deals uh, the gray bloom of youth, it deals with the uh, age of consent laws. And what I've said was it's not to criminalize perverts, but it's to criminalize the prevention of, of the contagion that is same-sex uh, attractions. Now, many gays would laugh at this and say, well, you know, you can't spread homosexuality, but the whole point of Grero is that you can a lot of homosexual or a lot of same-sex attractions between men are, in fact, uh, something that is culturally dictated. So, in many cultures in the past, you had many men who had sex with other men, and then culture came along and said, "No, you're only going to get married from now on." And by criminalizing this kind of behavior, this is exactly what they're trying to do. They're, uh, you know, this is this is a, a bill that was sponsored by the church, 
And it's always been the church in, in the West that has criminalized same-sex sex. Uh, so, so, you know, this is, this is an unfortunate development, but it's entirely predictable that when you give uh, religion power, they're going to use it to try to uh, encourage people to be in their image. And uh, the video that we're going to insert in here, uh, it deals with our, our good friend Dustin Zito from chapter, I think, 8. Uh, Dustin Zito was, uh, he, he did a little bit of gay porn. And it's interesting because he then went on MTV for a reality show and then denied being on gay porn. Then they showed it and uh, he was forced to become a little bit more honest about, uh, about his inclinations. Uh, but the point is, he has a little interview up here, and uh, I just want to insert that now. Oh, the hard I'll questions. Okay, I mean, we know, that, shoot it. we know that you made headlines because of your past, uh, with, with your uh, involvement in the game in the porn, porn industry. industry. Yes. There you go. So, yes. do you still find yourself defending yourself? There are situations, still to this day, that, uh, you know, I kind of find myself in where I'm like, oh... This is not normal, mm -hmm. you know? If everybody didn't know about it, it wouldn't be this. But uh, when I went on the show, I knew it was gonna come out. It, I wanted it to. And Why'd you want it to come out? You know, you carry something like that, you're a secret, mm -hmm. you know, a real secret for a long time. Like, no one knew what I was doing in LA. They thought I was modeling, acting, you know, hanging out, uh, just having a good time. And whenever you come home, it's like four years later, you're like, Whew, I got this. I got this burden on my chest. I don't know how to tell people. You know, you start kind of wanting to tell people one at a time, and it just doesn't work out. Putting it on the show was, you know, of course, I wanted to do the show anyway, no matter what. I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I was like, yeah, of course. Before you sign these papers, you know that this is gonna be blasted. You know that this is gonna be a part of your storyline on the show. But yes, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm not gonna be mad. I'm not gonna do that. Yes. I, do you have any questions? You know what I'm saying? Like, we, hey, I'm not scared to talk about it. You, you haven't. You, you don't have me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's better to be positive about it. It's better to be open about it. It's better to be real about it. I figure, you know, it's a part of my life that I, uh, I went on an exploration. I went on to do an adventure. I was like, hey, I'm getting out of Louisiana. I'm gonna go do something. Okay, so uh, so you know I, I find it funny that uh, you know he, he he now he now says that oh well I wanted this to come out but in fact if you look at the MTV clip that I uh, that I linked to in the book that I'll link to in the thread below as well he's actually very adamant that uh, you know that uh, having sex with other men is wrong so I don't know I don't know when he changed his views on that and now he's so blasé about it. The other thing is, you know, he said he's uh, he was exploring or exploration or, you know, exploring Los Angeles. You know, the last time I, I was exploring in Los Angeles, I was there on a business trip and I ended up, uh, you know, being bored in my hotel. So I started walking and then I, uh, after about two hours of walking, I hit Sunset Boulevard. Uh, that's exploring Los Angeles, not, uh, you know, not doing, uh, you know, porn for pay, but... Anyways, that's that, and uh, so if you have any uh, interesting uh, Grero-related articles, uh, send them my way, and I'll try to make some, uh, some interesting remarks on them, or at least uh, hand them out to more people. So thank you very much.